So the apparatus here, um, can you explain what it is and, and how students might use it? Okay, so this is um, the apparatus to recreate Millikan's famous oil drop experiment. So remember, he was the person who uh, measured the fundamental charge on an electron. Okay. So what we've got here is we've got two um, plates which have got um, an electric field between them. Um, and we can spray oil droplets in between the two plates. And um, when the droplets come out of the atomizer, they can gain an electric charge. So that's just um, a tube at the bottom so that you squeeze? Just tube, so we just pump a few oil drops in there. We know the density of the oil. Um, that's one of the important constants that we need for this experiment. Yeah. And then here we've got a microscope which can um, which detects the oil drops falling down, or just you, you can um, it magnifies it so you can see the oil drops. And this is connected to a flexi cam, which we can then um, show these oil drops um, on a screen. Okay, so, so the screen here, this is just, uh, it doesn't really show much at the moment, but this screen is basically what's inside there, just magnified. Yes, that's right. So the, the microscope's got scale on it. So in fact, between these two um, markers here. So, so what are the markers? So this is like pretty high tech. What are the markers made out so of? So the markers are elastic bands. So every good physics, um, <laughs> physics lab has elastic bands and blue tacks somewhere. Yeah. So we found the elastic bands are really good for helping the students um, kind of line up where they're, they're where the oil drops are so if I move it you can see that the markers only, only oh, yeah. goes to this point but if we put the elastic bands over then it enables you to get a mark on the whole screen so what you can see here is these are actually oil drops and they're suspended between the plates so for these drops gravity is being balanced by the potential difference between the plates okay so that's slightly hard to see but you can I, I can just about see them here they're just just this small white thing that's right yeah and so it's, it's not really moving up or down so how come it's so it's floating in midair so effectively it's in equilibrium so the um the electric force on it due to the electric field between the plates is balanced by the force due to gravity okay so that enables us to get a measure of the charge mm -hmm. so that finds the charge so then the difficult bit is finding the mass yeah so you, you can't just put one oil droplet onto a mass balance and record it directly? No, no. So it was actually Millikan who came up with this this method of doing it. So they, mm -hmm. they, they realised they could balance the oil drops, but nobody could figure out how to do the, how to actually um, measure the mass of the oil drops. So what you then use is terminal velocity. Okay. So if you measure um, the, the time it takes the oil drop to fall between these two uh, elastic bands, so we, kn we know this distance, this is actually magnified um so the distance between these two bands is two and a half millimeters mm -hmm. and so we know the distance if we measure the time then we can use stokes law to actually measure the radius of the oil drops because the, the drag force depends on the radius yeah. and then we can um, use uh, the density of the oil in order to find out its mass we know it's it's radius we assume it's spherical so mm -hmm. four thirds pi r cubed yeah and then we we can find um multiply that by the density to, to find the mass. And, and so this allows first year undergraduates to work out the elementary charge on an electron? Yes. So you can record your data um, here. So we ask students to get sort of 20 oil drops. Um, and then you'll, it's not exact. You, there's lots of uncertainty here, mm -hmm. but you can get some good results. And what we're hoping to do at the end of the year is to get to collate everybody's results. We'll have thousands of measurements and then we can get some really mm -hmm. good statistics for the, the charge on the electron. And, and what I noticed was that you're writing things in by hand in, in, a, in a lab book. So you're not going straight to the computer, you're just using uh, pen and pencil to kind of write up the experimental method and to, to actually record data. Yeah, we're really keen um, for, you to, for students to write everything in a, in a working mm -hmm. notebook. So as a working research scientist, you would have a lab notebook and you would record stuff in your notebook. You wouldn't mm -hmm. record it um, on scraps of paper. Yeah. So you, you know, these days you might have a, a electronic notebook, but it, the principle's still there. So your working notebook, um, as an experimental physicist, somebody needs to be able to pick up your notebook and be able to read it and understand the experiment and be able to reproduce it exactly as you've done. So it's it's a really important to learn how to keep a really good working notebook. Um, yeah. So we encourage all our students to do that, and it's marked every week. And then just using Excel to, to plot data in this case? Yeah, so we use Excel or Origin. Um, for students to analyse and, and plot data. We used to make you do it all by hand, but we've, we've <laughs> slightly gone into more modern technology these days. And in terms of the, the data that you've got, um, what kind of measurement do you, do you tend to get for the, the elementary charge? 
So it varies. So sometimes you can get fractional ones, but you would expect a, a margin of error because there's it's quite a lot of human error in mm-hmm. um, in lining up the oil drops between the two elastic bands. You have to measure that distance quite accurately. So. As with all experiments, we get you to kind of think about the uncertainty in the experiment, where where it, would those errors occur? Mm-hmm. And um, you'll, you'll see I haven't worked out the errors yet in my spreadsheet, but we, we ask students to work out those margins of errors for each each data measurement and then collate it so you'd know sort of the uncertainty in your in your results. Fantastic. Thank you so much.